Hi everyone and welcome to Frank Talk on Mortgages. I'm Don Scott, the CEO of Frank Mortgage. Today we're going to talk about bond yields and how they affect mortgage rates. So in 2022, as most of you are aware, the story of the mortgage market was interest rates. Most of that news was centered around the Bank of Canada though, and their multiple changes to short-term interest rates and what impact that had on variable rate mortgages. But meanwhile, bond yields were moving around quite a bit, mostly increasing through the year, having a significant impact on fixed rate mortgage yields as well. So let's talk about that. But first let's define what a bond yield is. A bond yield is the return an investor gets on a particular bond that they invest in. So if the bond has a price of say $100 and over the year they earn $5 in interest, the yield on that is five divided by 100 or 5%. Pretty simple. But how does that affect mortgage rates? Well, any lender has to raise the money in the market that they then on lend to you when they lend you money uh, for your mortgage. So they pay a cost for that. And so if you're a bank, you raise money through deposits, maybe you go to the capital markets and issue bonds or other instruments and or access other facilities that you have as a bank. If you're a non-bank lender, uh, you can't raise deposits, but you can go to the capital markets for funding or you get lines from the banks. So the capital markets have a pretty significant impact on the funding costs for any of the lenders in the market today. And so they'll lend you money at a certain rate that is higher than the costs they pay to raise the money in the market. And the benchmark that is used by most lenders for pricing a mortgage is the bond. So if it's a two-year mortgage, it might be a two-year bond. If it's a five-year mortgage, it might be a five-year bond, maybe a four-year bond, depending on how they view things and calculate their math. So what influences the spread that lenders use to price mortgages over bonds? There are a number of things that go into that. Every lender has their own unique pricing model, but the inputs are usually pretty similar. Uh, they're involved with things like their view of the economy and the market generally, the view of the risk profile of that particular mortgage that they're offering and the, and the borrower profile of the borrowers that qualify for it, um, the level of competition in the market for that particular product, their own cost of funds, and their profit margin expectations, which can vary between lenders and but also within a lender over time. So given that, given that these pricing models are unique, it really is important for you to shop around. Talk to a broker who has access to a lot of lenders so that you can always be able to take advantage of any particular pricing anomaly or pricing special or any, uh, any time that a lender has a lower rate than their competitors. Because um, if you're not shopping around, you're not gonna find those low rates. So there are those factors that are specific to the lenders for how they price a mortgage, but the bond is the benchmark. So what influences the benchmark? yields as they move around. Well, there are a number of factors that everyone considers, and we'll point out a few uh, key highlight ones here for you. First is inflation expectations. As we saw last year, as inflation expectations go up, yields usually rise. And we saw bond yields increase last year as everybody expected inflation to be higher and persistent. Economic growth, stronger economic growth can lead to higher bond yields. Weaker economic growth can lead to lower bond yields. Central bank policy. As central banks take action on interest rates, even though those are short-term rates they're acting on, the things that cause them to take those actions are often concerns of the bond market as well. And when central banks raise rates, you'll often see longer-term rates move in concert. Uh, overall debt levels of the issuer. So if the government of Canada has a high debt level, investors might demand a higher yield relative to another issue who has a lower debt level because there's a perception of in incremental risk with the high debt level. Supply and demand, more investors that want a particular bond, they'll drive the price of that bond up, which will drive the yield on that bond down. And the last one is credit rating. So an issuer that has a very high credit rating can issue at lower yields than uh, an issuer with a very low credit rating. So countries like Canada with high credit ratings usually can offer bonds to the market at lower yields than a number of other countries in the world that uh, have lower credit ratings. So can we accurately predict where bond yields will move in the future? The answer to that is no, in our opinion anyway. I think a lot of people try to make those predictions, crystal ball where rates are going, and the truth is they're usually wrong. And we see that in the market quite a bit. There are a lot of people who will say, take a two-year mortgage, for instance, because certainly rates will be lower in two years than they are today. Well, we don't really know that for sure. Uh, we don't think that's a, a good analysis for your risk tolerance to just say something like that. 
And there are experts in the market who are paid to make these predictions. And as we saw last year, I don't think many of them got it right. Most of them missed high inflation. Most of them missed the number of Bank of Canada increases. And most of them missed the increase in bond yields. So we need to be very careful who we listen to and not believe these crystal ball predictions from so-called experts or even people who aren't experts in interest rates, say like mortgage brokers. So what can you do to protect yourself against increasing rates? or interest rate volatility, let's say. Well, if you're in the market, either looking to buy a new home or looking to uh, look at options when you're renewing your mortgage or to refinance or switch your mortgage to another lender, the best thing to do is get a rate hold. Now, a rate hold sort of puts a cap on an interest rate for you with a particular lender, but it doesn't commit you to anything. That's one th key thing you need to understand. You're not committed to that lender or to that rate. And if when it comes time to do your mortgage rates are lower, you benefit from that. You'll get that lower rate. So you don't have to worry about it locking you into a rate. But what it does is it provides a cap so that if rates go up from the time that you get the rate hold, for as long as the rate holds in place, say up to 120 days, you're protected. So it's a smart thing to do while you're shopping around for a new mortgage. So don't try to make interest rate predictions though. Don't listen to advisors that tell you where rates are going. What you need to do is have an advisor who works with you to understand your risk tolerance. Many, many of us don't want variable rate mortgage risk and we don't want short-term mortgage risk either. We'd rather just get a mortgage, say for as long as we can at a rate that we can afford and put it away so that we have peace of mind, we don't have to worry about it. Then there are the others of you that like to take risk, that feel you know that rates will go down and you have a very strong view on that and you can afford to be wrong. Well then variable rate mortgages and short term mortgages make sense for you. There might be a bit of a financial advantage to do that, but it really depends on you and your own personal tolerances and your budget. So find an advisor who understands that, who will listen to you, help you understand your risk tolerances and your budget and be able to get a mortgage for you that um, suits your needs and hopefully allows you not to have to worry every day about where bond yields or interest rates are going. If you want to talk to someone who can do that for you, treat you fairly, give you open, transparent advice, please look us up at Frank Mortgage, frankmortgage.com or the number on the screen. We'd love to talk to you and love to help you out with your mortgage needs. Again, I'm Don Scott from Frank Mortgage. Thanks for watching.